Custom chamber cooker causes catastrophic collapse, scammers surge swarming printables with shady schemes, and Bowdoin blowout brings bedlam, but the printer pushes on. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 223. Let's get into it. Starting off with an interesting one here that was shared to us at least half a dozen times. Too good not to share from one of the bamboo groups. We have an X1 carbon here that, uh, well, has suffered from a bit of uh, heat creep, one might say. So this user has a DIY chamber heater that allows them to keep their machines at a reasonable temperature. But if you forget about that and you don't have something that's monitoring itself this is what happens now this is not our first time seeing machines that have been woefully overheated in fact we've had multiple cases where machines have been torched by a blowtorch to solve various printer problems that they may have so please don't do your own diy chamber heaters unless you have like a proper pid system in place to handle it and we now have the panda breath which is big tree tech and bq's smart chamber heater system which we've shown you prototypes at rocky mountain rep rep s which we'll card to if you guys want to take a look at that where i have attempted to steal it every single time at 108 us dollars or even 100 bucks if you don't care about the filters this is a much better solution that in theory is going to protect your machine because it's got a pid control system i am thoroughly interested in this whole idea of diy chamber heating your 3d printers because well a lot of these larger printers don't have chamber heaters and unfortunately a lot of machines that do have chamber heaters are either subpar or require me to give up way too much of my data for something that I don't think requires it. What the heck can you do to solve this? I, I legitimately do not think that there is much that you can do to solve this. I don't believe that Bamboo sells most of the plastics that are damaged here. Yes, I believe they sell the tool head covers, but I don't think you can buy this piece. I don't believe you can buy a new micro LiDAR. And certainly if the outside plastics are messed up, the system that holds the micro LiDAR in place, definitely damaged as well. God, I, I, I hate to say this, but to me, this machine is a bit of a write-off. The amount of labor that it's going to take to fix the problem, it's just easier to get another machine. And I recognize that not everyone can just throw money at the problem, right? I certainly can't either. But there becomes a time where your labor grossly outweighs the amount of money that it takes to just go buy an x1 carbon off a of facebook marketplace and roll the dice on it and now you have a parts machine as long as the parts that you need are not actually plastics but i think this is a very tough lesson to learn and certainly this does say well we would like to see all these parts available but we recognize that that's not the kind of company that bamboo is have you done some diy or more like diy I'd love to know in those comments. And hey, while you're down there, don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed. My name is Grant. This is 3D Musketeers and Print Fix Rider, where we help you getting your printers back to printing with purpose. And if you've got some issues with your 3D prints and you want us to take a look at it, you can reach out to us on all the social medias and our preference, film a video on YouTube, upload it, and tag us in that description so we'll get notified and we can take a look at that video and see what's going on. Because photos are great, but video tells a lot better of a story. Speaking of stories... This one comes to us from Gabe, Mr. Lucky 13 Toys, Mr. Dummy 13, the person whose model I promise you know, but the person you may not know. He has been getting an influx of these scams. First off, the QR code has been modified so that if you try to scan it, nothing's going to happen. So thank you, Gabe, for doing that. And we can see that this comes from not printables, but it says that an order has been purchased through their printables account. The seller has not passed verification, so your funds have been temporarily frozen for safety. That is a scam. Printables will not do this. This is such... I, I hate that we have to do this pretty much every single year. As the scammers get better at doing their jobs, this, if you are not really paying attention, is clean enough that I think multiple people are going to fall for it. But what this will effectively do is give a scammer 
access to your printables account because they're using a phishing website. And that's Fishing with the PH. I'm not wearing the fishing shirt, but I am wearing one of our IT related shirts. So if you do want to get some super sweet merch, we'll link to it in the description down below. And hey, if you're feeling zesty, use the code FUISP10 on this particular shirt to get 10% off. Anyways, with this, you as the user have to get lucky every single time. Scammers only have to get lucky once. And if they get access to an account like Lucky13, the maker of Dummy13, the model that blew away the entire competition last year in the Printables Awards, winning both the Community Choice and Prusa's Choice, that would be a bit of a problem. Those of you out there that are sellers on sites like Printables, by Mini Factory, Cults, and others, be careful. The scammers are out in droves. You got to be very careful. And if you're not certain, just reach out to the company separately and say, hey, is this legit? If not, let's go ahead and add it to your phishing things so that you know what's going on and you can alert your users. I think it's valuable for us to keep in mind that, yes, scammers are everywhere and they're not just going after your grandparents' money because apparently you did something dumb and the only way to get you out of jail is with Target or Google Play gift cards. Something something kit boga. Do not eat him that! But moving on to an interesting one from the 3D Printing for Beginners and Pros Facebook group saying PETG is so frustrating. This is Sudden Loop PETG, fresh out of the box, dried for 48 hours at 50C, which is the highest their dryer goes. The AMS was showing A humidity, which is apparently 10% on their hygrometer, and it always comes out bubbly, and in this case, it exploded. They're thinking about trying some other brands, but nearly all the PLA they've ever printed was flawless immediately, and the exact opposite for PETG. Looking at this, this is not moisture. We have a really dirty build plate. Looking at the bottom of this part, we can see tons of areas where it is simply just not sticking to the build plate. And quite frankly, I think it could even be the model that there's a fair bit of this that isn't touching the build plate at all. See, with PETG, if you don't have a high enough bed temperature, it doesn't stick very well. No matter how clean your bed is, if your bed temperature and your print temperature is not hot enough, PETG does not stick. I would do 80 to 85 degrees Celsius on the plate and at least 255 degrees Celsius for your first layer and 265 Celsius for the rest of the layers. Now with PETG, similar to PLA, it is easy to tell if you are overheating or underheating the plastic. Is it matte or is it shiny? If it's shiny, you're good. Is it stringing? It's too hot. And if it's matte, it's too cold, crank those temperatures up a little bit. And you can do this middle of the print, it's no big deal. But if you're starting off the print too cold, nothing's gonna stick and it's not going to work well from the machine itself. But looking at this, our first layer looks like crap as well. So I'm not exactly certain if this is temperature, if this is the model, or if this is the fact that the build plate itself might not be clean. If you are new to 3D printing or if you're a seasoned professional, our biggest tip that we can ever give you guys, and only for a minute, use glass cleaner, ammonia-based glass cleaner to clean your build plates. You will often see the generic bottle of Windex behind me. It works on every build plate material that we've ever tried, whether it's glass, cause it's glass cleaner, both smooth, and textured PEI, including the satin plates from Prusa, Cryogrip plates, all the different first party and aftermarket build plates that we've tried, it works amazing. And you might say, but Grant, I use isopropyl alcohol. Great, but isopropyl alcohol doesn't actually remove oils. It spreads them around. Ammonia removes the oil. That's why it's so good at cleaning glass from your grubby fingerprints touching the glass. So take this as a bit of a, uh, you know, pro tip from a pro ammonia-based glass cleaner. Even the generic Windex works perfectly fine. This is absolutely not wet filament, nothing. There's no stringing. Your part has separated from the build plate and has made a beautiful plate of what Marshall Mathers might say is, Mom spaghetti. I would make sure that the bottom layer is actually touching the build plate. If it is, Great. If it's not, 
you need to look at either cutting the part or reorienting it so you have a really good contact surface with that build plate. If you are still struggling, you can add a brim if you want, because remember, a brim is attached to your hat and a skirt flows around you. A brim gives you extra kind of sticktivity as it was to the build plate. A skirt doesn't do anything. I would also check to make sure that your hot end itself isn't bent. We see that sometimes that can happen. And in cases like with PETG, where it does have a tendency to warp if it's not dead perfect, PLA is a lot more forgiving. PETG might not like sticking down because the hot end might be at a bit of an angle. And last but not least, one from, uh, one from yours truly. Let's take a watch. Well, it finally happened. We burned through a Bowden tube on the Chidi Plus 4 printing nothing but regular PETG. The print still continued, thankfully, so I don't know if we're going to technically call this a print fail, but uh, I guess we should probably do some maintenance of these machines. If you two watched that video and said, huh, I should check my Bowden tubes, you probably should. These are from the three in production Chidi Plus 4s that we have here in the shop. This Bowden tube is the exact one that you saw in that fail. The entire tube has split open. Now we got lucky. The filament just kind of ran its way through, pushed it out of the way and moved on. And the other two tubes we have were not much farther away. You can see on that one how it is quite thin and uh, it does have a small little hole in it, but it hadn't exactly failed yet. This one here was, gosh, maybe 100 microns away from disaster. We ended up replacing it with regular Bowden tube. This is thinner Bowden tube than what is traditional. It looks like it's maybe only half a millimeter thick. We replaced it with the full thickness Bowden tube. I'm not exactly certain if that's going to play out well in the long term, but um, we're going to find out. But when we figured we had to cut it for one, we might as well cut it for all the ones that are in the shop right now. And turns out that like three or 4,000 hours, the two plus fours above me pretty much run 24 seven. And the third one is just the, the backup machine at this point. And they've been running like that for months. Apparently that does wear out the Bowden tubes. Who'd have thought? Machines are back up and running. The hardest thing was dealing with the filament tangle sensor that they have on those machines, which is a spring-loaded Bowden tube coupler. So I had to kind of hold the coupler with one hand, use my other hand to, like, actuate the coupler itself and then pull it all apart. It was, it was a sight to see, to say the least, but it was only like a 10-minute repair. Because we're used to running more bed slingers than we are Core XYs, Replacing Bowden tubes is not really something that we're used to having to do, but I know we've talked about it here on the channel and yeah, I know, I know, do as I say, not as I do. I figured, you know, we don't always show off a lot of the failures that we have here because oftentimes we can't, but this one was one that we had to share with you guys because even we make mistakes as well. Has this ever happened to you guys? I'd like to know down in those comments, but People that do replace their Bowden tubes often, I figure, are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Remember, if you do want to support the efforts that we do here, you can do so by joining for as little as $1 a month. And at the $10 tier and higher, you can come hang out in our private Discord, which is spammer free because we don't put up with that crap and we pay gate our Discord so we don't have those situations. But that is all we have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Happy holidays. Take care.